part of your dive planning is you've got to figure out uh, where you are going and is it feasible. For example, it might not be too feasible to go to John Lloyd State Park on Memorial Day to make a dive. It's going to be too, too crowded. You also have to figure out uh, facilities. Parking meters. Do you need dollars? Do you need quarters? Uh, are the places for restrooms there? Are there? Is there parking available? Are there places to get refreshments? Water, showers? These are things that you should determine before you go out and make a dive. You don't want to go out and just indiscriminately jump in the water not knowing what you're doing. So you plan things beforehand. Part of your planning uh, is also to figure out where you're going to get in the water and how you're going to do it. How to get in and how to get out. <laughs> That's important. Um, down here is not too much you have to consider, except finding a parking space, going off the beach, here in Florida. But you have to consider the water conditions, how you're going to get in the water. For example, we have two ways of getting in the water. One is what we call a calm water entry. Calm water entry, you essentially walk into the water, put everything on in the water. Calm water exit, same thing. Take everything off, walk out of the water. Rough water exit or entry You need to have, we'll be showing you this in the open water lessons, but you need to have all your equipment on, including the fins, air in your BC, mask on, regulator in your mouth, and you're going to be walking out backwards holding hands. And if a big wave comes, you're going to turn towards each other, hold both hands, legs wide, and you're going to lean into that wave so it doesn't knock you down. You get knocked down in the surf, and it is a very funny situation. You're rolling around, rolling around, and you're trying to get up and everybody's laughing at you. So, that's the way we do the rough water entry. The rough, rough water exit, unless you're a big strong person, you should swim. With all your equipment on, regulator in, mask on, swim right up under the beach, and in that surf zone you get up on your hands and knees and you crawl up out of the surf zone until you're completely dry. You can flip over your back, sit down, rest for a minute, take your fins off to stand up, or even take your tank off if you need to to stand up. Okay. We also need to determine our turnaround point. You don't want to just start swimming out until you run out of air and then come up to the surface. You want to try to avoid surface winds. The surface is the worst place to be. The current's worse up there. On the bottom, the current is one-third what it is on the surface. On the surface, you got waves flopping around you. On the surface, you got boats running around. On the surface, you got pelicans diving on you. So, you want to avoid surface winds. Especially if you're going off the beach, we usually have a longshore current. A longshore current is running parallel to the shore. And can be going in any direction before you go in the water. So that's another thing you have to look at, is which way is the current going? Because if you're swimming out on the surface, that current is going to move you away from your target. Or coming back in is going to move you away from the beach where your parking is. And then you're going to have to walk all the way down the beach with that tank on your back, finding your car again. So, but if you go out underwater, the current is less, so it's not going to move you as much. It's especially important in boat diving 
where if you get too far away from the bolt, then it's going to be very difficult to get back in. And sometimes the boat either has to pull up anchor, come back and get you if you get too far away, downstream especially. So the rule is, when we're diving off a boat, Boat is anchored usually or tied to a buoy. Current's going to be coming against the boat. The rule is, at the beginning of that dive, you dive into the current. That way, if you do have to come up to the surface, you're going to be in front of the boat and you can just drift back to the boat. So you plan your dive to go into the current at the beginning of the dive. That way, if you get tired or anything, you're going to be in front of it. Now, if you had gone and just jumped in the water and let the current go tear you away, now, when you come up the surface, you're in the worst possible situation. Remember, the current is one-third less on the bottom. So when you get down to the bottom, you're going to actually make headway against that current. The average diver can swim about one mile per hour. The average current out here is going about a half a mile per hour. Of course, the Gulf Stream is going around two to three miles an hour. And some days we see currents going even more than that, more than one mile per hour. On the surface, you couldn't make any headway at it at all. You probably would be losing distance. But if you go down to the bottom, you can make headway against it. It's going to be one-third down there. Remember that. That's important. You used to try to plan your dive, especially bolt diving, that you stay in front of the boat, when you come back, you look for that anchor line and come back up the anchor line. Boats should have a safety line strung out behind the boat. It's a long length of rope that floats or there's a buoy on the end. It gives divers something to hold on to while they're waiting for other people to get in the water before they descend. Also, when they come back up, it gives divers something to hold on to while they're waiting to get back in the boat. Also, it makes the boat bigger. If I made a dive into the current and I'm coming back and I kind of missed the anchor line, I got down here somewhere. Now when I come up, as I'm swimming to that boat, I'm being pushed this way. But now with this safety line, I got a bigger target to hit. Sometimes the current can be so bad that once you get in the water, <laughs> it's very difficult to swim up to the anchor line because you want to descend on the anchor line. You don't want to just, especially in the current, you don't want to let the air out of your BC start drifting down. By the time you get to the bottom, you're back here somewhere in the reefs up here. So, in a situation like that where it's difficult to get up to the anchor line on the surface, some boats will have to use a tag line. That's a line going from the stern up to the anchor line that you can hold on to with your hand. So as you're kicking, you can pull yourself at the same time you're getting up to the anchor line. And in the current, while you're descending, don't let go of that anchor line. Keep hold of it until you get down to the bottom where the current is less. Okay? Same thing coming up. Try to come up that anchor line. All right, so we made our dive into the current, beginning of the dive. When do we turn around? The rough rule of thumb for open water divers is one half your air supply, you turn around and start heading back. 